Hello and welcome to Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. This is episode number 184. Mark Sargent and myself, Patricia Steer, have not been here with you doing a secret show since the 9th of August, 2017. What's that, some three weeks ago or more? Oh, almost a month. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. what is it that's kept us from our microphones, kept us from slaving over a hot computer? We have both different reasons and some are the same. Uh, you go first. Um, we both had to qualify again for firearms training because of the new rules hey. of the CIA. Hey, 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 hey. That's what? not what we're supposed to be. Talking. Oh, right. <laughs> the on the record reasons. Wait. Hang on. Hey. What you got the script? All right. Cover, cover story for the fifth. Cover story for the fifth is we were doing a whole bunch of stuff. <laughs> That's good. We August, were... August 9th, I was uh, in the Whitby Island slash Seattle area with Mark uh, for show 183. And we went on a ferry ride uh, in a previous sort of little jaunt. And then we did our show 183. Uh, which was at the uh what's it called the um not space museum Center. of flight museum of flight exactly down at sponsored by boeing because boeing is headquartered up here in the pacific northwest and so they have their own not surprising they have a big manufacturing plant up in the north part of seattle and then the south part of seattle they actually have their own airport which they test flights they test all their planes on and because of that and because they're such a heavy contributor to NASA and all various space programs, they have their own museum. So they mix the, and you've, you guys, if you guys watched it, you know what we're talking about. They mixed reality and fantasy in the same museum. It's brilliant, which it is, is they have planes next to space vehicles and people take them both at face value. Yeah, exactly. When you see a plane and you can touch the outside of the aluminum skin, you know it's real. And so then when you see a capsule that supposedly went uh, to the moon, or at least a reproduction, you assume that that's all real stuff too. And right. it's very much geared toward children, especially the space part. Oh, yeah. Anyway, that's that's old news. The new news is, well, after I came back here to Houston, you had a, had a trip out to uh, watch an eclipse. I did. Uh, just before that. So yeah, after you came back, the first thing I did was I went down to Atlanta. Oh, of course. And that. that's all right. It was, I know it was a whirlwind tour of all these fun things. <laughs> went down to Atlanta to, uh, I wasn't part of the debate, but it was a biblical flat earth debate between Zen Garcia and Dr. Stephen Pigeon. Was it a debate of biblical biblical proportions or was it, it biblical debate? It, it was. Not only was it Old Testament, it was New Testament. Ooh. So yes, it was. And honestly, the I went down not just for moral support of Zen Garcia, who is a great guy. And as a matter of fact, I'm wearing one of his t-shirts right now. It's Firmament. This is one of his Can't books. see it. Stand up. Yep. Vaulted. Firmament, vaulted dome of the earth. Very cool. Yeah, very cool. That's the one of the covers of his books. And yes, then it, I have it, that book. He also sells all his books if you're interested in Zen Garcia's work. Uh, yeah, great, and, great guy on uh, the same network as me. He does a show called Secrets Revealed on True Frequency Radio. Great guy. And he just mopped up the floor with, with Dr. Stephen Pigeon. I was really there to see what the religious side could bring to the table against Flat Earth. I already knew what, what the scientific side, the secular side could bring. I just didn't know what the religious side could bring. And it was pretty much what I expected, whereas they just focus on very, very small points and try to microscope it. In, in Dr. Stephen's uh, Dr. Stephen Pigeon's case, he would take a, a phrase, like, I don't know, the one that's always fought over is Isaiah 40, 22, uh, he who sits upon the circle of the earth, and yes. break that down into Hebrew and then dissect every word in Hebrew. Hey, uh, Pigeon's got his PhD in, I don't know what his PhD is in, but it's, he could, he could, he's very good in Hebrew. And so he's breaking it down, but it's like, okay, fine, and you just lost the audience because nobody knows Hebrew. And or I should say most people don't know Hebrew. And, and so that, and he'd focus on that for like 10 minutes. And then Zen would go in on like 10 or 15 different points, bam, 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 bam. And Stephen would try to focus in on one of them. It's like, no, plus the audience was completely skewed. There was no globalists in the house at all. Mm. So a lot of fun though, had, had a good time. All right. So then you came back from that and then it's eclipse time. 
Uh, no, then I really actually did it do firearms <laughs> qualification again, which because that doesn't really matter. Uh, no, no. Then, uh, yeah, then the documentary team that's been working on us for the last several months, they invited me down to the blackout zone, which sounds ominous, and it should have been on ominous. It really was cool. But the 70-mile-wide blackout zone that went from Portland, Oregon, all the way down to Charleston, South Carolina. And so we went down to Ground Zero, which was Salem, Salem, Oregon, which is in the, the dead center of the blackout zone. So you'd still see a blackout zone if you went 35 miles north or 35 miles south, which is not a great distance, but we we're right in the center of it. And it was supposed to be, you know, they, they had warned, it was, oh, there's going to be all these people, it was going to be inundated. And we showed up the, the day before. We drove, we came down on a Sunday. So instead of going down Monday morning, because Interstate 5 was going to be a nightmare. We went down Sunday and spent the night in Newburgh, Oregon, outside of Salem. So we we played it, again, love the prepping here. Not only did we stay out of the major population zones, we went to the to the far west and, and then dr sn snuck our way in. But we went down the night before, or the afternoon before, because we got there pretty early. We left early. They We came up here. He, he came up here and the the he and Caroline, and then they we drove down. We took two cars that Sunday morning. Daniel is the he that you, you, that uh, Mark's speaking of, and you may have met him if you watched a previous episode of the show when he was in the studio with the camera, a big filming camera. So anyway, right. continue and, with and your Daniel story. and I are not dating. I don't care what people say. We're not. He we're is not cute. Dating. He is cute, though. He's, well, you know why he's cute. Why why he's he, he has a he's draw cute. is because he looks like I don't think he looks like that actor. Oh my God! Yes. Oh, are you kidding? We would, in fact, there was a you know a third. And you saw that picture. What's the, his name? Was, What's the actor's name? Ethan Hawke. Okay, Ethan Hawke. Sorry. Ethan Hawke. And we were actually in a restaurant, and the cameraman. There was another cameraman. We we pulled in from Portland or, or close to. I think it was Beaverton, and he, we were sitting down in a Mexican restaurant. And he was sitting across from me. He's going. He's going. Hey, would ever tell you you're like a dead ringer for for like Ethan Hawke's brother? You know, not Ethan Hawke himself, but like Ethan Hawke's brother. He goes, Yeah, I get that all the time. So anyway, we were there the day before and we knew there was something odd because Eugene, I'm sorry, uh, Salem was pretty much empty. You could have shot a cannon through that place. I mean, it, you know, there was no worries as far as parking goes. Very little, you know, a few people selling T-shirts here and there. So we all right, we'll, we'll wake up a little later. So we, we got there a little bit later on that Monday morning and no trouble at all. Absolutely. The the masses basically took the warning from C because CNN was the one that put the story out there. It says, oh, yeah, Salem's going to have a million people in it. And even the media wasn't where we thought they were going to be because we found this beautiful park on the edge of town right off of right off of, of the city center called Riverfront Park. And it had a fantastic bridge and a, this giant 30 foot uh, tall, uh, high ceramic globe. And we took pictures and we were shooting the entire morning. People, there was, yeah, there were people who had camped out in that park, but it wasn't anywhere near capacity. All the media was out at the airport because NASA was running one of their high altitude tests where they took a one of their pl special planes and flew it up. So we, we saw it. It was, you know, we saw the, the, the contrail up there going in a circle, but it was gorgeous. It, and, and I can't even, it, unless you were in the blackout zone, it's really tough to describe. Yeah, you might have been in the 95% the range, but until you get to that 98, 99, and 100% range, you hadn't seen anything. Because then that's when the when the real magic starts. Uh, the, the Everything goes dark. It gets cool. It was perfect conditions. I know what people were saying about the rest of the country. It was socked in along, along that 70-mile corridor. But where we were, and I put the pictures in the slideshow, and if anyone wants them, just email me. I'll, sh I'll send you a couple. But they're in my slideshows now. Not a cloud in the sky. It was absolutely perfect conditions. Just a hint of haze to the east of us, but that was because of forest fires in eastern Oregon. So it was, it was great. And we were there for most of the afternoon, shot a ton of footage. And then I headed, we spent the night again in Newburgh, and rented a um uh, an Airbnb out there. I didn't even know that was a thing until this year. Had no yeah, idea. I never heard of Airbnb before either, but it's super popular. It apparently, it's destroying the the normal hotel industry and the um uh the uh, uh, bed and breakfast community. Hmm. Because as you can imagine, it's like Uber but with houses. 
that's really all it is. It's it's like, okay, you you, you want to stay somewhere? Fine. You know, you're not going to be around. I'm going to rent my house out. There's Just an app. like uh, Uber is destroying the taxi industry. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what's happening with Airbnb. I did not know literally was a thing, but apparently that's what lots of people that are that are traveling, you know, like film teams like this. It's easy. Super easy. I mean, we had a, a three bedroom house that we just got, and it's like, oh yeah, you know, it, it might be up for sale, may not be up for sale, but they, you know, they they schedule things around it. Yeah, it's not a hotel, but it's, it's pretty nice. So after, well, while you were there, you saw the uh, the flat Earth billboard that was in Oregon. I did by flat Earth Oregon. We shot that. We shot that footage the day before the the eclipse. We went there because we we figured because it was literally on the corner of Interstate Five and portland road or portland avenue and so we knew that was going to be and it took us a while to find it even that day before and there was no traffic we, we we had you had really we had to park next to like a ramada inn or a roadside inn or something like that and then walk across a field to get to it but it was great once we got there and yeah it was perfect a digital billboard that was shooting that was projecting from two different angles both northbound and southbound uh took some great shots and totally surreal here i was did it make a big impact? The location was it appropriately picked? I know perfect. It was, but... it was perfectly picked. It was you couldn't have asked because it was right next to Salem, and there was a lot of people. Anyone that was driving down, and the, most of the lazy people did. You know, they they got up early that morning and tried to make it from Seattle to Portland. You know, and tried to bypass the traffic. It, it was it, it it took us an extra hour the day before because of construction and different things, but it was perfectly placed great great slides they did a masterful job and if anyone yeah if anyone wants to take a blueprint off of what to do with a billboard that's it because you're paying for the the slots so they don't care how many different images most people just use the same image for different slots you know they rotate the the pictures between different advertisers but in our case in in flat earth's case we rotated i think they had at least i counted six there was maybe seven or maybe more i don't know we we stuck around for a while and took different pictures, but it was were, great. Were, were any of the slots for something diametrically opposed to Flat Earth? No, it was Portland. It wasn't going to be like a space program okay, or okay. satellite okay. television or anything like that. But it was it was good. It, it, it was it was eye catching and again subliminally, it really caught your eye. And as you know, I love subliminal hot sex messages. So, by the way, you have something in your eye. Do I? Okay, it's out now. You're good. Oh, okay. Uh, how was the eclipse itself? You saw it. Beautiful. D did you see? I mean, did you have a feeling? Was there anything in the air when it happened? Anything um, weird? Any strange? Well, because no one had ever really seen anything. I mean, yeah, I was alive when I was in grade school, when the one in the 70s, when you couldn't look at it. But, and so the different, the, there were two things that were really different. One, everybody had those super cheap, uh 3d they're even cheaper than the the 3d glasses you get at the theaters nowadays it's the old paper three you know blackout glasses so most people were like doing this doing this just to see how far along it was and when it got to that 99 percent point where it was just this tip of a spotlight before it got to full blackout everybody got chills i mean the whole crowd was i mean yeah they, they were kind of cheering but at the same time, it was more awe-inspiring than anything else because you'd never seen anything like that before. Until you see it in person, it's it's like seeing uh, like a special effect in a movie that really catch, catches you off guard. But you realize it's like, whoa, whoa, I'm not anywhere. You know, this is this is actually happening. But for me, I was very uh, skewed in terms of my bias because. You know, it, you, I'm looking at it now, I'm going, yeah, and you're going to tell me that one of those objects is 93 million miles away and the other is a quarter million miles away. And they, they just happened to just pass perfectly in front of each other. And that was definitely not the case. When I was looking at them, it was close enough to touch. It was, it was beautiful, it was awe-inspiring. I recommend anybody, you know, if we make it to the one in seven years, uh, to, to go to the blackout zone because absolutely, even though the blackout zone next time, apparently is going north to south, but it was beautiful. It's Absolutely. not going to be the same type of eclipse, though. Uh, well, no, it's going to be the same type. Really? Yeah. All right. I'll but but, but in this case, I don't think you're going to be able to. You probably not in your lifetime are you going to get a chance like this, where it's at the end of the summer, uh, it's crossing the bulk of the United States. You know, this time, 
and the 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 city and it was going over major population centers all the way and it was it was it was just breathtaking many people came out with really great videos with their theories as to what is happening and most people saying uh, are saying of course that they can they know now that what science has told us is happening and what historically people have believed is happening is not what is happening many people have had uh, different videos with their theories um ditrh had a really good one done with what looked like a snapple cap and uh, a, 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 like a paper towel i think and uh, what's your take on what is causing it? I know that you think that the skies are a planetarium, but if we were to look at it from a different perspective, an Eric Dollard sort of perspective, that's it's where I'm coming from. The the mechanism that, and I'm, I'm going to go with DITRH and Mike Helmick on, these, on, on this one, because they were the ones that put out the videos when they were bringing the images into Photoshop, and they were saying... Uh, that it, it, I thought the, 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 how they worded it was very interesting, which was nothing was causing the eclipse. And what they meant by that was, meaning there was no three-dimensional object that was moving in front of the sun. It, it, it appeared from all the, the, the pictures that we were looking at, when, once you bring them into to Photoshop and play with the levels, that the sun is self-eclipsing. And that shouldn't surprise anybody because that's what we've been thinking about the moon, or at least I've been thinking about the moon for, for some time, which is the moon creates, you know, if there's no earth between the sun and the moon, then how can a blood moon happen? How did the crescents, the waxing and waning crescents happen? And that's because the moon is dimming itself. So why wouldn't we ever think about the sun like this? Well, because up until now, we've never seen the sun in that capacity. The sun is... Uh, we've never seen a half sun or a quarter sun or anything like that. It doesn't, we, it's never happened. So when I saw this, that's exactly what I, what I thought is like, Oh, you, you know, in, in hindsight, it's like, Oh yeah, of course, of course, that's what it's doing. Why wouldn't it? it it's, it's the easiest way to go. With the sun and moon from what we think within flat earth being the same size, it seems as if they are pretty much the same thing as well. Oh yeah. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. You could the other amazing part of this whole eclipse. Yeah, you could in fact I joked that you know all you'd have to do is interchange the bulbs if you want to talk about it mechanically, interchange the bulbs and and take, you know, put equip the moon with a brighter bulb and you got yourself a second sun. That's all we're really talking about here. The sun and the moon, if the moon is self-illuminated and we know the sun is self-illuminated, then the, you know the Eric Dollard part of it and that is they're just transformers. They're just light bulbs that can be controlled by whatever high-tech dimmer switch they decide to use. And Dollard said something like it's coming from a, a, the, the, another dimension. So. Right. Yeah, why not? I mean, if you can, tra I mean, it was something that te even Tesla was working on, which was wireless energy transfer. If you could do that, and we can do that to a certain degree with different things. We can do wireless speakers. We can do wireless phones. We can send a lot of stuff wireless. Energy is a little tough for us, and I don't even think that technology would be allowed to be released into the public anyway for various reasons. So in this case, yeah, the, the sun appears to be just uh, its own light source, but it's being powered from something else. Eric Dollard's a genius, and it, it only would make sense if he came over to the flat side, but in his writings, he speaks of planets and that sort of thing. I wonder if he's done some research behind the scenes and learned about flat earth he's not one of those people you can phone up or email who's going to respond to you he's definitely a person who keeps to himself that is that is true and he again if you if you guys don't know what i'm talking about look up eric dollar d-o-l-l-a-r-d when he talks about the sun and where he's sitting in a car and i think he's, i think that was like his lounge chair is, is is that car i don't think he was living in that car but he he's a man of simple means and he, when he was talking about the sun, it wasn't just the conviction, it was the obviousness of it. You mean, it's like, oh yeah, you know, sun, sun, there's no fusion happening up there. It's well known, you know, the, the fusion, you know, the, the, the solar flares, yeah, there might be some fusion in the flares, but there's nothing there on the surface. And he, he couldn't explain it, of course. There was, a, there was a little bit of humility and a lot of uh, facts that were absolutely apparent to him. And when you listen to him, you have no doubt that that he's got most of this figured out. Yeah, he's, yeah. I think, the only man who's been able to reproduce many of Tesla's experiments. And it's D-O-L-L-A-R-D, if you want to look him up. So, What did I say? 
I think only one L. But then again, maybe you did really? say two L's. No idea. Let's rewind the said. tape. <laughs> uh, well, if 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 we're having a communication issue, maybe. Uh, okay, so that happened. The eclipse, so that happened. The billboard, and then we missed a couple shows because of that. And then I think we're moving into the uh, month, deeper into the month of August. And my niece, my sister, Amy, who doesn't have Facebook, people are like, well, let me see your sister. She doesn't have Facebook. Anyway, her pictures are on my Facebook if you want to, if you want to friend me. I actually, my public, my Facebook's public, so you can look at my photos anyway. It's Steer Family Album. Anyway, uh, my sister's daughter, 24 years old, got married in Michigan. She graduated from Michigan State University, so did her fiance, and they are both in Cooley Law School, and they have a outpost in Lansing, Michigan, and they're going to school there. Um, she has a, my niece has a, a home, a condo actually, in uh, Grand Rapids, Michigan. My sister lives there. Anyway, because I had to go to the wedding, and I was in the wedding as a bridesmaid, I decided I would do a flat earth mixer on, uh, on a Thursday in August and uh, headed over there on uh, Wednesday the 22nd, did my mixer flat earth bowling on the uh, 24th Thursday. And then during that time, there was a storm that started coming closer and closer to Houston, Texas. Now, when I left on uh, Tuesday the 22nd to go you know, to Michigan, the storm was just something happening out there in the water and I didn't there wasn't any indication of where it would go. It, the fear porn hadn't cranked up yet. The storm at that point, I don't know what was going to happen. I didn't even really know there was a hurricane. Anyway, I did know as we progressed to the wedding, which was uh, Saturday the 26th. And I was completely paranoid, panicked and worried about my three cats here in Houston by themselves. Although I do have a cat sitter and I do have cameras inside and outside my home and I could look at them. Um, I was just fearful, paranoid of flooding. And of course, at that time, as the storm approached and as it was raining down, uh, holy hell on Houston and surrounding areas, I didn't know exactly what was to come, what was to happen, but I did monitor my cameras and look outside and saw no flooding and breathed a sigh of relief when it was over for me and then saw the devastation for the people of Houston and surrounding areas. And uh, I wasn't able to get back for quite some time. The airports were closed. And uh, although it's supposed to leave Sunday, it took quite a while for me to get back to, I believe, the next following Thursday. And uh, I was able to get home fine. And I didn't see much devastation. I flew in at night. I did look out the airplane windows and noted it was flat, of course, but also noticed a lot of water below. But then I thought, wait a minute, is that water just regular water? You know, lakes, streams, et cetera. I, I didn't know, I didn't remember, and maybe I was just being paranoid thinking all, all that water was, was standing water because it was so dark, I couldn't tell exactly where I was flying over. Anyway, the city of Houston, as everyone knows who has spent any time looking on YouTube or if you have TV or newspaper, or, is in a horrible, horrible situation. And um, people are helping people and things are getting better, but there were two reservoirs uh, on one end of Houston. And because they were already in disrepair and threatening to crack and quite full, city made a big mistake there with not maintaining those things. They had to basically offload the water. So after the hurricane was gone, after the rain was over, when there were blue skies and birds singing and people were, you know, putting their lives back together, uh, they had to let the water out of these reservoirs little by little. And areas that had not been flooded by the initial hurricane became flooded. And people's homes that had survived, people who were happy and high-fiving each other that they had lived through the hurricane and everything was great, lost everything. Animals, people, the George R. Brown Convention Center, I believe, is at... Uh, 12,000 people. I've been doing some volunteering there and uh, American Red Cross is working with them. Also the Humane Society for the Animals. I have mentioned before in a previous show that the Humane Society, although they are doing a great job rescuing animals from people's homes who have either left their animals behind or I have no idea why anybody would do that, but I have no idea the situations everyone's in. Um, they do rescue the animals and get cages and, and, and help, but the animals brought to shelters oftentimes are brought to 
to kill shelters. The Humane Society is a, a they're not a no kill shelter. There are other organizations I wish that were handling this situation. Anyway, hopefully it'll all be sorted out. But that's Hurricane Harvey. But now we've got Hurricane Irma, which is out there approaching. And a lot of people were theorizing that it was going to head straight for New York, Manhattan, and uh, land there, make landfall on 9-11. But that just could be fear porn and conspiracy talk. At this point, I think it's uh, hovering between a category four and five and is headed toward uh, Florida, southern Florida. Uh, South Florida would be um, Fort Lauderdale and areas like that near Miami. Of course, hurricanes are crazy things and um, they often change their course. And I just wish the thing would die in the water before it even hits some of the outlaying islands before it it makes makes landfall. One of the places that it could go is the Carolinas. And I was thinking about, of course, all the people that we know that are flat earthers who live in the Carolinas and the people who are flat earthers who live in Florida and even up into New York, wherever this thing's gonna go, but also the Flat Earth Conference as well. Um, all of this is just so horrible and tragic and unreal. And it brings to mind something I've heard many flat earthers and non-flat earthers talking about, geoengineering. And are these hurricanes manufactured? So Mark, what's your take on that? When it comes to storms like that, I think we've had that technology for quite a while. And when it came to Katrina, that's when the first time I had ever, that's the first time I ever considered it was that Katrina, when you're, when you're watching the time lapse of it out in the Gulf, and then it just did a weird little turn and bared straight into uh, New Orleans, I had my suspicions. When it came to Harvey, I also had my suspicions because, and I, I don't care if you, if you say that the, the computer weather model does this and does that, they're, they were awfully accurate with this i remember you were the one that, that kind of told me oh yeah it's going to go into houston it's going to just stay in houston for a while i was going when when does a storm just go into an area and stop and just start start dumping rain yeah the winds of course had died down but there was so much moisture it had picked up from the gulf that it was just just turning into a rain engine and remember i had just gone through that not too long ago out in boulder colorado when we had our 500 year flood which is even weirder for us because it was a um uh, it was a high desert out there. So it wasn't like we were pulling off any gulf. You were literally in the center of the country. And yet we got 17 inches of rain in a week, which of course nobody was ready for. Nobody had flood insurance and it, and it caused a huge amount of property damage and some deaths because the, the cliffs, you know, the roads, the mountain roads got, you know, their mudslides and stuff like that. So is it possible we've, we've come into the area era of weather modification? Yeah, you bet. Sure, well, why not? A, a great video by Bro Sanchez, and many have seen this already. Um, also, Richie from Boston has done a video on the topic. I linked the Bro Sanchez TV video in the description box of this uh, particular video. So go check that out if you haven't already. He talks about geoengineering. And uh, there is a BBC film clip of a man in Mississippi, uh, and he is obviously British, and he is talking about how NASA is seeding clouds or basically making clouds. And they're doing this on the border of Mississippi and Louisiana. And it, once they kick this machine on, which they say they're testing rockets, but uh, it seems like what they're really doing is finding ways to, to create moisture and move that moisture at will to varying areas. Which, which is an interesting idea. And again, not surprising. We've been doing crop seeding now really ever since we had planes. You know, you just fly up high enough, you know, back in the old days and, and seed the clouds literally with particulates. But now, but now we've realized it comes down to energy, which is, you know, storms have huge amounts of energy and, and, and it, you need that energy to generate weather systems. Problem comes in is when you take energy and put it into one place, the system is going to compensate in other ways. And so, yeah, fine, you can generate rainfall over here, but you're going to have blowback. The system will balance itself out. If you, I firmly believe this, which is in, in a pressurized 
enclosed system. You, it, it is no different than bringing a propane lanter into a car that has air conditioning. That car is going to compensate for the heat you bring into that car. And then that's an oversimplification, but that's what we're talking about here. And this, this is the subtle ways. Uh, in fact, I even joked about, you know, couldn't you knock out technically, couldn't you knock out a hurricane with an atomic weapon? If you believe in atomic weapons, you know, if it was out, out in the water somewhere, couldn't you just plant something in the eye of the hurricane and try to cancel it out? I think one of the reasons why they didn't do that is they know the energy systems better than anybody. L let me, let me go in real quick to something that even though I don't quote him that many times, Matt Boylan. That story that he told about you know the drawing of the sit you know the system but down below, the one thing that he mentioned that really caught my ear was that it was temperature based, meaning it was energy based, and the system has this cyclical energy system that if you disrupt it, it's going to come back and bite you. Look at the tornadoes. There's the uh, John C. Stennis uh, Space Center, and that is in Mississippi. It's called uh, Hancock. County, Mississippi, and there's a river there called Pearl River. It's right there on the banks. And I believe it was back in the, I'm going to guess, 60s when NASA went in and decided to uh, construct this largest ever rocket testing facility. They went back there and there were people living there. There was homes, there was stores, et cetera, a small little town. But they told the people that they were going to do a test and have this very loud noise, which would be the sound of a rocket taking off, played on loudspeakers. And then they had these trucks drive with their windows open, listening to see when the noise had dissipated. And they used that as their way to map out an area that they would have to make all the people who lived within that area and worked within that area go away. So I think that they uh, told the people that they had to leave and maybe bought out their land. And now it's just in that area in Hancock County, there's nothing there, just land. And there's NASA with their rocket testing facility. And uh, I think it's a great cover story, especially when there's no one there to see what the heck they're really doing. Sure. And they fired that thing up during Hurricane Harvey. Mississippi is pretty close to, to Texas. Why would they fire that up and run it for the longest period of time it's ever been run during the middle of a hurricane? Sure. Unless they were trying to make that storm do things that it might not naturally do. Exactly. It's not, it's not to necessarily say that you can generate, because we're talking about a lot of power in wireless power that you'd have to generate. And I've, I've talked about this for the last couple of years, which is if you were trying to break out of a system like this and you invented something that was based on frequencies like HARP and it didn't work like anything the military finds, uh, you know, or like anything, any science-based invention, they'll try to find another use for it. Uh, look at, this is going to be a bad example, but people get a chuckle out of it, which is look at the blood pre pressure medicine. That, that failed as a blood pressure medicine, but then was turned into, you know, Viagra and all its clones, otherwise known as the boner pill. You know, <laughs> that's, boner, that, I've never heard that before. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, it started out as a stupid blood pressure medicine that failed. What if HARP was decided, what was, what if that was used as, try, you know, as some sort of weapon? And they realized that it really wasn't that great as a weapon or a way to break out of the system. So it's like, what can we do with this? Well, you know, the, where we were testing it, it was weird. All these clouds formed or these clouds got bigger or there was more rainfall or less rainfall. And then trial and error. And next thing you know. They did that with a drug, I believe, that's called Caraprost. They prescribed it for people who had an uh, eye condition, uh, glaucoma, I think it was. And the people who put these drops in their eyes grew very, very long eyelashes, freakishly long, where they were touching the top of their eyebrows, or excuse me, the bottom of their eyebrows. And of course, what did uh, science do? Pharmaceutical industry said, wow, this would be a great thing. So they renamed it and made it into a serum for eyelash growth. And of course, that is not going to do well with the human body, just putting a drug on your body in order to grow long exactly. eyelashes. Exactly. I mean, crazy and stupid. Yeah. But, but, but can, can storms be altered? Sure, why not? We've got, we've got the tech now to pull this thing off. The question is, what do you use it for? Do well, you they're using everything for bad, not for good, because think about it this way. They have this tech. There's video showing, um, the, check the Bro Sanchez video in the description box, of them creating a cloud and then rain. And the guy from the BBC says, NASA's playing God, which is indeed 
what NASA is doing. Right. Why can't they use a machine like that and create rain in drought areas? Why do we have so much drought in California? Why don't they just kick one of those machines on and save land, save animals, save people? I think there's a limit to what they are able to do in terms of uh, regions. Meaning, yeah, Gulf of Mexico apparently is is a snap. <laughs> the South Atlantic, you can do that all day. Hurricane Alley, I think, is the area where these hurricanes are coming from. Yeah, and and typhoons, the other side, you know, going into the Pacific Rim, that's one thing. But yeah, doing the West Coast of the United States, something from the Pacific, it's kind of like I I kind of see it like uh, if you've ever done sailing, you know, you can you can tack, a, you know, only so far, but a ship cannot sail completely upwind. You know what I'm saying? You, you can only use the energy to a, to a certain limit. And then it's like, oh, you know. I refuse to believe that that they can't figure some way out to help people with this sort of thing. As a, I, it's, my, it's a theory. To harm. Well, I'm saying your theories are pretty sound, but yet it just seems odd that it can only be used, if that's what they're doing, to harm people. Sure. I, I honestly, for me, Katrina seemed, and you were there, Katrina seemed to me as I was watching it unfold to be sort of a test of what a major city could withstand in terms of a na natural disaster. You know, what do you do? What happens when you cut the power and disable the roadways in a major city? What happens? Because they held the National Guard back for quite a while and the feds got criticized a lot for their delays and bringing in the, the, the troops and bringing in the food. And honestly, if it wasn't for the uh, reporters that got there early that flew in on helicopters, remember the media was all over that place. Media was like uh, hanging around the Superdome, talking to people and all the people was like, where are the troops? Where are the military rations? Where are the, where's the rest of this stuff? So. Another good channel to check out is A Plain Truth. Uh, also, Weather War 101. In fact, I think I may be wrong, but A Plain Truth uses some information from Weather War 101 and then puts words to it because Weather War 101 just uses music and graphics. And a lot of people like to be talked to when the, when there's a video going on, especially yes. those who don't look at the video and they just listen while they're doing other things. That's kind of what I do. So um, yeah, now everyone is uh, worrying about uh, this this new one that's coming. People right now in Florida are currently evacuating. Yep. Stores are stripped of water. Stores are stripped of generators. Stores are stripped of sandbags. And that hurricane's still like what a week out from still making out. landfall. Anyone um, wants a free survival guide? Email <laughs> me. M Sergeant 23 at Comcast.net. It's M S A R G E N T 23 at Comcast.net. And if you followed me at all, you know that I've been given this free for two years now, which is one of the reasons I caught some flack recently. It's like, look, I'm a prepper. I, I give out a not only do I give out a free survival guide, it's not just, and you've read it, it's not just a survival guide. It's a survival guide for if you never even prepped. So you could actually, if you printed out a copy of this thing and doomsday happened, you could like take it and actually maybe make it out in one piece. I like the guide. I was already a semi-prepper, actually. I, I can't really say I'm a prepper because I don't have firearms and some of the other things. Um, but I have a lot. I have a lot at the ready. However, the uh, although I wasn't here in Houston during the hurricane, I would never have evacuated because I didn't evacuate for Katrina and nothing happened to me. I was right outside the French Quarter in the highest area. And I just said to myself, I know they're taking it, telling people to go to the Superdome. I don't want to go into sort of a mass group of people because it just doesn't seem right. Plus, I've got my cats. At that time, I had six cats. Uh, I don't want to go where my brother at that time was going, which was Dallas, a little road trip with his friends, because my brother and I are completely different people and his friends are different people than I am. I don't really know them. And they're more, um, I don't know how to put it, partying, partiers, I guess. <laughs> and, uh, I'm, I'm me. So I thought, you know, maybe just better to do this on your own. And uh, anyway, I didn't evacuate, but I was prepared I yep. was prepped even then. I did have lots of water. I did have lots of food. I did have flashlights. I did have extra batteries. I had all of that and I had my phone charged. But the thing that happened during Katrina was the cell towers got knocked out and yep. the radio towers got knocked out. I mean, I basically lost my job. 
uh, there was no, you're, it was almost like a, I had cash. Cash is way better than having a credit card during an emergency because uh, you can't go swipe a card during an emergency. Right. The power's out, but like you couldn't get gas. Now, a real prepper would have had cans of gas and all that, but I was, you know, living in an urban area. I wasn't living in a, you know, remote area where you could have all those things. But uh, I did have enough gas and I was able to get out and evacuate and move on with my life after the hurricane. Being prepped doesn't save your life. It can help no. save other people's lives. And I encourage anyone, no matter where you live, forget about hurricanes at the moment, no matter what, it's a really good idea to have a lot of extra water on hand and some uh, non-perishable food items and an emergency plan with your family and uh, just, you know, blankets and things, what they call a bug out bag. So you can just throw that backpack over your shoulder and have all the things that you might need, some bandages right. and an ability to start fire. So if you need to cook outside and that sort of thing, like, like some type of knife, Get that stuff together. Keep one in your house. Keep one in your car. It's My, a great idea. And your uh, the free download that you're talking about, the Prepper Guide, would help. But you did catch flack because people were saying, oh, well, you know, everybody can't do that sort of thing. And people were told by the government to shelter in place here in Houston. Indeed, that's true. I know you were actually talking about Katrina in that case. Um, with Katrina, I think that a lot of people couldn't afford to leave. Uh, some people just chose not to leave like me just because I'd seen so many hurricanes come and go. I was sick of leaving and then coming back and sure. the traffic and the horrible hotel stay and just a nightmare of the whole thing. And you come back and everything's fine. But in the case of Florida, people, because of Hurricane Harvey, may stand a better chance if the hurricane hits there, Hurricane Irma, because they've learned from Harvey. People There's right a now are taking their furniture from their two-story home and putting it on the second floor, stripping everything there from down below. Absolutely. There's... There's a meme that's actually part of the, you remember the motivational posters? I think it was called Successories. Oh yeah, with the uh, eagle flying in the background. Oh and all God. That. Oh, there's <laughs> horrible. I, 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 I was in two offices where they bought tons of those things. They sold so many to offices. It's like, oh yeah, every manager thought it was the most greatest thing ever. But they also, because there was so much backlash, there was a whole series of posters out called Demotivationals. <laughs> and, and, and you can look at that. And one of them was like a ship after a hurricane. And the Demotivational says, some there are some people that just serve as warnings for others you know because of what happens and yeah in in, in harvey's case look you know let me we I'll, were told I'll though i mean i wasn't here but people here were told to shelter in place by the, the government the reason why i did the, the survival guide in the first place was because of katrina and it wasn't because of what happened to katrina it's what happened afterwards so the whole city evacuates but out of the people that came back three out of four of them still didn't prep anything and that drove me insane it's like whoa 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 you were complete you were evac i mean i know you didn't evacuate but you were relocated you had to leave you came back and you still i mean we're talking about you know if you can't get a case of bottled water use tap if you can't you know get food from you know you don't want to get it from the grocery store get it from the food bank i'm just saying if you don't prep and you don't leave then don't act surprised when it happens don't don't that was the part that was driving me nuts it was like oh everyone seemed like they were blindsided it's like how could you be blindsided they told you days in advance that's why yes florida is probably going to ha be handled much better because they watched what happened to houston if you have a car if you have a, a a scooter whatever your mode of transportation is have it filled up always keep your car filled up i know Absolutely. occasionally you know you 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 you, you don't fill it up, but I feel way more secure when I have my car all the way filled up because if a situation arises, I'll be better able to snap into action and get the heck out. That That is survival 101, which is they say, never let your gas tank drop below half. And I know lots of people, they, they push it all the way to, you know, where yeah, the warning light comes I've on. run out of gas before. So I, there, mean, I never have, <laughs> but I understand. Of course I, you I, haven't. <laughs> of course that. No. And I know it's easy for me to say all this because I over prep. I really do over prep, always have. I've over prepared for everything. But in this case, look, just it's 2017. It's not like you're going to be caught in, uh, from nowhere. You know, it's, it's like, look, you're you're basically I don't want to. We're go speaking to certain people who have the ability to do things. There are people who don't. There are people who are in retirement communities where the there, people there that are run that place who course. 
they don't, the people who run the place don't care. And that happened in New Orleans too. There were retirement communities where the power was shut off and the old people that were there were left to die with no air conditioning. It was very hot uh, in 2015 when Hurricane Katrina hit in New Orleans and surrounding areas. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what the staff did, just left and left the older people in their wheelchairs to fend for themselves. I think things like that happened here as well. So being prepped can't save everyone. But it is it's a not going to save everybody, but there's look, we've we've all seen them. There's a lot of those people that were photo opportunities in the streets. And I looked at them going, you didn't have to be one of those people. Well, it, they, they tell you, don't go out in the street in a car and yeah. drive over standing water when there's yeah. a hurricane going. You might die. Yeah. yeah. But then so, again, what if that person was trying to go save a family member? or? And, and I'm a believer of of staying of of standing in place you know prepping and not, and not moving because you can you're there's so much i mean i got a lot of stuff that i'm not going anywhere and but i do that deliberately because yeah a bug out bag is a nice idea but for me it's like yeah it's a little yeah you're mobile but there's not enough stuff you can carry to be honest if you have a family it's good to have the bug out bag in your car not really for no. bug out but if you're stranded somewhere and can't get home oh yeah yeah, yeah. the bug out bag in the car that's essential no question always everybody should have a bug out bag in their car somewhere even if it's a crappy bug out bag. and keep your phone charged up and keep like i learned from up. katrina my phone didn't work so best laid plans of mice and men let's let me let me end this topic with this the anyone wants the manual again m sergeant 23 at comcast.net i will shoot it off it's only two megs in fact a flat earther did the condensed version for me uh, but it, the the big the quick summary is uh, water in this order, water, food, some sort of light source. And then, depending on who you are, something to defend it with. I'm not saying you have to go out and buy a gun. If you think you can hold it with a nine iron from your golf club you know, bag, that's fine. But those, that's the, the, the big thing. And people need to remember their pets. Their pets are family members too. If you evacuate, you take your pet with you or you deserve to die. I'm not Potentially joking. very tasty pets, yes. No, no, no. There were pictures of people in Houston or pictures of animals in Houston that were tied to uh, poles and the house was flooded and the animal was like standing on debris. The people were gone. They left mm. their animal to die tied up. What kind of person is that? Yeah, it's I, not good. There's no fact, excuse it, for that. In fact, there was an advanced thing that I was thinking of including uh, in the in the manual, but I didn't because I, I I didn't flesh it out well enough. I wanted to, I wanted to finish it, which was in some sort of like looting scenario. Yes. Let the let the animals out. I I, I was. It's like you know, don't kill the animals. People are going, why? Why wouldn't you kill them? I'm going, well, because they're better at finding food than you are. Wait, Remember, why would somebody in, kill their animals? Yeah. Wait, why would somebody? Well, that's... no, no, no. If you're like, if no, some people like if you're looting whatever animals you see, especially dogs, you just you just shoot them because you. Oh think my they're... god, I don't even want to think about that. Yeah, I know, I know, but don't. I, well, I'm saying do the exact opposite because animals, because of their senses, can find food. They will find the resources that you probably can't. I'm lucky I had a cat sitter that was here watching my house while I was gone and, you know, cameras so I could watch what was going on with my house. I was the cats thinking, eat her? <laughs> no, they tried to eat her. <laughs> no, she was a cat sitter for several other people too and was making her way through flooding conditions. She wasn't in a super bad area. She didn't lose her home or even have any damage, but she was just making her way through roads that were flooded to get to the animals. And definitely that woman is angel because she cared for my cats like i would care for them i'm cool. so fortunate and that's another thing if you're not going to be in town forget about the fact that you know there might be a hurricane coming something could happen in your life there could be an earthquake there could be a fire you need to have somebody who has a key to where you live you need to have somebody who has ability to handle your pets and knowledge on how to take care of them and you can be that same person for somebody else too it's working together as a sort of extended family a lot of us don't know our neighbors i know my neighbors and my cat sitter and i i would do what she did for me for her most definitely you need somebody who can access your home and handle a situation in an emergency and yep. uh, sharing keys is a great thing. People don't do that sort of thing anymore. Not everyone's nope. like you, where you don't even lock your doors <laughs> where you live. So when I when I was in Colorado, I literally didn't lock my door for years. Of course, there was an interior building, you know, so it wasn't mm -hmm. wasn't gonna be that difficult. But yeah, I mean, you you like to think that we we've evolved as a civilization, 
But if that's the case, why do we literally have locks on everything? Yeah, very true. So, anyway, what else? What else we got? All right. Well, let's uh, all together give very good thoughts about Hurricane Irma and uh, Irma's drunken brother following Jose. I think it's called Jose, and it's moving at a sort of strange back and forth rate behind Irma, heading who knows where these hurricanes that are out there. Let's just together think that these things are going to go and disappear, <laughs> to, to, that, that they'll go down to a category one, that people won't lose their lives and we won't see a repeat of what happened in Houston and surrounding areas. It's going to be forever till this place recovers, I'm telling you. It's huh. going to be forever. Well, let's talk about some flat earth stuff. Maybe we should go into the live chat and say hi to everybody. Okay. Let's, I like how you said that. Okay, whatever you say. <laughs> All right, I generally well. do what you say. Really? Yeah. That's good to know. Then I it's can in my that. contract, really. I can use that to my advantage at some point. Yes, you could. Well, hello. And have. <laughs> I have, you're right. Yeah, as long as you don't say no, it's all good. That's, uh, that's not a happy thing. <laughs> well, I want to say hello to all the potatoes. And that's everybody who's in this chat. Why would you be a potato if you're in the chat of Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes? Well, this is the way I look at it. All of us, before we awakened, and we're not awake, we're awakening. So before our awakening to this and many other subjects, it's like we were asleep with no eyes underground in the dark. And then we grew into the sun, out. Now we can see. We have eyes. There you go. So we're potatoes, all of us. Nothing to be ashamed about. No. I want to say hello to Donna Farnoof, who says hello to you and I, Mark. Uh, Irk Child says potatoes. <laughs> Nathan Oakley is here. And uh, Bipolar Flat Earth is here as well. Uh, Bipolar says, I love both of your glasses. <laughs> It is true. We're both wearing black glasses today. Wake the Sheeple is here. Sleeping Rock Dragon. Mr. Drobot. Zoe, be here in love is here. Doug Zay, or excuse me, Z is saying hello to us. Phosphorescence says, if I got a pet lemming, it would probably hurt itself too much. Because <laughs> it would follow the other lemmings probably ah, off the cliff. Got it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Nathan says, my phone... Uh, my phone uh, survived a, uh, an experience with a glitter factory. Yes, it did. It was a very nasty glitter experience. Hello to Five Arts, Liberalis, and Earth Pond. Hey, Earth Pond. Moneybag, who wanted to see the phone again, and I just showed it. Uh, I have this gold cover. I also have a silver cover, so not that it matters, right? Um, but you asked, so there you go. Uh, let's see. We've got all caps, space, space, says the cat's our ultimate survivors. That is really true because I know when I was in Michigan watching uh, on YouTube all the hurricane stuff, I said, oh my God, my cats, my cats. And you told me, even if the hurricane's a dead hit on your house and rips the roof off, the cats will find higher ground. I, 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 let me add one sobering comment to that. Oh no. That if you were in it and it hit and you died, the cats would probably survive. Right, because they the, eat the, meat. Is what you're saying? Well, well, the, oh, maybe, but the yeah. animal animals have way better survival instincts than we do. We've seen this time and time again. You know, everyone in the house is dead. Dogs and cats run out when you open the door, right? It's, or they're eating them. One of the two. The point is, uh, how how loyal is a hungry dog? Yeah, very loyal. I think I don't. Some are. My, my cats Some, would not eat me. Uh, cats, would, I don't know. My cats would be like Lassie, and they would run to the neighbor and meow, and the neighbor would come save me. No, uh, cats are going to eat your face. No. Pretty much. <laughs> Hello to Good Times for All and um, Curved Water Music and Martin Leakey. And uh, who mm. else? <laughs> Third Eye First says UK in the house. I think I already said hello to Uptina Walker and Alexander Sasha and Shay Smith. And hello, Swamp Lover and all is one now and Chess and uh, Ginger Sugarbush. Ginger says, I have to keep my door locked. I have crackheads in the neighborhood. Well, yeah, well, yes. yeah. there's that. Hello to the Hori Sheet Show. Great channel. Subscribe. In fact, everyone should subscribe to each other's channel. That's what I think we should do. I subscribe to so many channels. And if you go to my channel, 
I do show who I subscribe to. So right. I also show videos that I like in case you, in case you care. It's all right there. Hello to Candy Franklin, I Spy NASA Lies, and Steve Watson, and Christopher Brady, and Daniel Reza, who says his door is never locked which is the way I'd like to live in the best of all possible circumstances. Rune Thornson and Frank Bocchiccio is here too. Uh, what else? What else? I'm scrolling up to say hello to everyone. Um, mm -hmm. Nora, no one's flower is here. Uh, Nora says that recently they started manufacturing water-powered cars again in Japan. Wouldn't that be great? Water-powered yeah, cars? Yeah, not going to happen. Sorry. Yeah, you, you can just only like so uh, what happened to the electric car movie. Yeah, um, the petroleum industry is too entrenched. They're not going to let it happen. They can't. You, I'm not. I'm not saying it's from an evil point of view. I'm just saying you you will not have corporations that will s commit commit suicide by letting that happen. They will buy them out. Uh, learning no, no different than uh, cubic zirconia. Remember when those things came out? Yes, yes. And who owns them now? De Beers. They De bought them out because they realized that people kept buying cubic zirconia. Learned Hand or Learned Hand, I don't know how uh, this YouTuber pronounces it, is talking about MMS. It's an amazing sterilizer. It heals every type of infection. A few drops will clean water. It kills everything. And it breaks up some chemical compounds through oxidation. I it like it because my initials are in it. MMS, that is true. Um, so put MMS in your bug out bag or in your uh, prepper kit if you can get some. Mr. Drobot, hello to you. And hi to the conspiracy theorist. And uh, let's see who else is in here that I want to say hello to. Hello, Cammie Aisling, who uh, was on Globusters the other day and did fantastically, as always, actually. One of the most intelligent women in Flat Earth uh, would be her. And also um, Nora, No One's Flower. I and see the, uh, the porn version of Globusters showed up. Globe thrusters. <laughs> Hi, globe thrusters. Uh, also, Lisa Hartline Realm, speaking of intelligent female flat earthers, and Candy Franklin as well. So many others. And if I didn't name your name, hello, Arwen as well. Uh, and you are a woman involved with flat earth. I was not trying to slight you. Hey, raised by gypsies. Um, all right. And Oktina Walker. I mean, come on now. Oktina Walker. A show without Oktina Walker is not a show. I don't know her. The um, <laughs> the marble, by the way, popped in for a second, and I should oh. mention that there is a flat Earth meetup in Seattle. It's going to be down near the SeaTac Airport. That's going to be this Thursday, day after tomorrow, at a restaurant called The Point. Officially, it's in Burien, but I just call it SeaTac. Burien. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's Officially, I, I mean, yeah, you could say Burien. Nobody says Burien. It's I never heard of Burien before. So. No, no, nobody has. It's just my. It's just a. Out, just outside of the airport. In fact, we drove by it when we were driving around. And uh, I will be there on that um, one. And Steve, I am not going to be trying to catch a ferry. I'm going to get a hotel. <laughs> I'm going to spend the night down there because that way I don't have to worry about because I would imagine we'll probably close this place. The first ferry I've ever taken, similar to, you know, I think I took a ferry where you could take your car across, but it was a really tiny one and it might have been in Mississippi or New Orleans. The first real ferry I ever took um, was with you which was kind of neat. First ferry I ever knew was, his name was Lance and yeah, he wasn't he afraid was to cry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, gosh. Uh, speaking of smart flat earth women, Elizabeth Mapple Mapplebeck is here, says HSN, which is called the Home Shopping Network, starting at 9 p.m. Pacific is selling Wise Company Emergency Food for $89.98, if you're interested in that. Hey, Kathy of Tribulation Now. You know, the thing about those uh, pre-packed food things that you can purchase um, right. that she mentioned, I think they're good if that's what, the way, the route you want to go. Me being vegan, I, I, I make my own pack of food and essential supplies. I don't know if there's any company that comes up with a form of MREs or emergency food that's vegan because most people think, you know what, if it, if a if the you know what comes down, you won't be vegan. You'll just want something to eat. But. Generally not, and I don't. I, I will. I don't endorse a lot of products when it comes to survival stuff. But for me, it always comes down to the container. Pick up some. I think it's eight gallon uh, size action packers. Action Packers. Action Packer by I think it's made by Rubbermaid, and they they have it's a it's a snap levers and you can put bolts in them and they're great. And the reason why I mentioned that instead of like doing a bug out bag or buying MREs and stuff like that is you can put anything in that you want. 
-hmm. and it's still sealed. They're they're light as light as, as heavy as you want to make it, and they're heavily they're water resistant, almost bear proof or animal proof, and you can put them wherever you want, like vegan stuff. So you don't have to rely on the menu that is given to you by survival companies. You can just go to the grocery store, just fill it with whatever you want, and lock it up and get another one. I've got it's like sixty of them. I've got three of them, but I didn't know that's what they were called. They're made by Rubbermaid. They're very big. They're like trunks with the snappable lock. Well, you can get the really big ones. There's there's yeah. the eight gallon, and then there's the 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 big big ones, which you can p put some really large objects in. But the the, or, the smaller or bodies, if you really need to. Well, uh, well, it's or a child, really. No. But, what? Just an adult who deserves it, not a child. Right. No children. <laughs> but they do fit in. A couple if they're small. Uh, <laughs> Carolyn Gutman Day is here. Speaking of smart flat earth women, I say those words and bam, they all show up. Zoe be here in love as well. Um, anyway, uh, what does Zuktina say? Talk loud and bold if you're a smallish woman. Yes, that is a survival technique. Indeed. Do not act weak. Or get your in concealed public. permit, one of the two. That's true. If you don't have the ability to kick ass and take names, act like you do. And yeah. most people will be uh, thrown off by that. Uh, people who are victims on the street anyway, oftentimes even accidentally might have been walking like a victim. And you know, these days we walk like victims, no matter if we're huge bodybuilders, because we're looking down with a hunched back, looking at our phone. And that to a thief or somebody who wants to take advantage of you for other nefarious reasons. It's like having a big red arrows pointing at you. So I'm, as you know, I'm a gun guy. I'm a firearms guy. And look, even, and I'm going to use gun just because it's easier to say, uh, even a small gun, even the tiniest gun is still a gun. And most people will back down from it because, because I've seen people back away from paintball. But, you know, and that's just, that's just a little pain. You know, even a tiny gun helps. But that's just me. That my, this message has been endorsed by the NRA. <laughs> my old clothing store, a girl is a gun. A lot of people have asked me, why did you name it that? What does that mean? It kind of meant, in a way, a woman is powerful and deadly, you know, kind of a that kind of badass mentality that we're talking about. Or you were overly proud of your marksmanship skills at the academy. Yeah. Don't talk about that. I want people to never know that I have those <laughs> abilities. <laughs> I got five bullseyes in a row. Ooh, look at me. Whatever. Exactly. If people want to think I'm legally blonde, they can go ahead. They will They will find out that indeed is not true. Um, so that's, that's our chat. All the awesome people that are in there will come back and say hello together. Hey, Paula, bad Christian, who says she prefers a bow and arrow, but they're kind of bulky to carry around. I love I, the artistry. I covered that in my manual. I said, I Look. love that. I love the way bow and arrows are. There are a couple of people within Flat Earth, like Synthetic Dread, who now has a different channel name, but goes by Jed. Dread. Jason is his name. Uh, he uses a bow and arrow and has some videos on his channel. So beautiful. I got nothing. I got nothing wrong with them. They're great. I mean, as far as you can go out and reuse them and and for hunting and but hey, person to person. They're tricky. I treat them like muskets because it takes a while to cycle to another one. I mean, nobody's legolas. Let's let's put it that way. So after that first shot, if he, whoever it is is closing on you, you're going to run into trouble. And, and uh, by the way, one thing, I'm reading a few of the comments in here. Even a replica, because they were saying, you know, even an unloaded gun is a weapon. Yeah, technically. Uh, was that line from, uh, uh, oh boy, Nicolas Cage. Oh, what was that movie? You're where he, forgetting a movie title. What holy smokes, where he kidnapped yes, the kids. This, is, uh, this never happens to you. It always well, Anyway, he said, he goes, it's not armed robbery if the gun ain't loaded. But <laughs> the point is, you can get replica guns that look exactly like the real thing for half the price in, in some cases. And that's better than nothing. Just saying. Just saying. All right. defend yourself. Don't, don't like prep stuff and then just give it to the first person that threatens you. Uh, there was a funny comment in the chat by the conspiracy that's consphere, conspiracy theorist, who says, yeah. girl is a gun, my old clothing store, next to Monkey Hill Bar. All kinds of names going on in that block of Magazine Street. Indeed, you are correct. You must have lived or do live in the New Orleans area. Although that store, I sold it to a guy who at one time was a close friend of mine. 
who ended up not paying me completely for the store. And now we don't talk and have him for several years. But anyway, he uh, did buy in quotes the store from me, you know, legally all the rights to it were his and he ended up running it out of business. So I don't even know what's in that in that block of Magazine Street anymore. No, it's by the way, it's not Art of War. People are sending me movie things. Hang mm -hmm. on. It's Art of War was an excellent Nicolas Cage movie, but that was not it. Hmm. And uh, trivia points for anybody that can put this up in chat. Who is Nicolas Cage related to? Who is his oh, uncle? Wow. You know the answer to this. I don't, oh, yeah, we talked about this before, but it's escaping me right now. Speaking of guns, while you're looking that up, Zoe of Be Here in Love said, my mother had a fake gun on her bedside table. I mean, you know what? A fake gun on your bedside table? It's a weapon. A it's, better, it's better than nothing. Run. People will, again, if they've got a knife, it's the, the Sean Connery line. Oh, by the way, the movie was Raising Arizona. Oh. From, from the mid 80s. Okay, so who is he related to? Oh, uh, Francis Ford Coppola. His, actually, his oh, name I is really, that. his name is Nicholas Coppola. I and he decided that. to change it because, like, some, no different than Amelia Estevez, right? Mark Shear wins, he said, Raising Arizona. First yeah, Raising Arizona. Christopher is saying Coppola. Yeah, Coppola. Kristen Wolf is saying very cool thumbnail for this episode. Oh, yeah. It's a great uh, thumbnail of uh, me looking out, and there's a storm on the flat horizon ahead to, because we're talking about hurricanes and such. Okay. And, of course, there's always storms within the flat earth community, even if there's no hurricanes, drama storms. So Drama. Yes. Always gotta, drama. Oh, you know what? There's always drama. So, it's, but, there's, but honestly, there's always drama and everything. And that is, unfortunately, the nature of where we are right now. It's not completely unfortunate. I think it keeps people engaged in this sometimes it does but it didn't used to be that uh compelling that you know back in the day i mean it just seemed to have ramped up over the last 15 20 years it seemed where, to have ramped up over the past two years since we well, all well, started as flat earthers you know, people were interested like M mtv kind of started the whole thing off when they did real world yes. and that was oh well we'll just take an average situation but it seems that the ratings kept going up when people got in fights and when people argued and bicker bickered and all this stuff so let's promote that on this every season after that the other networks picked up on it now we have so many reality shows it's i i'm just sad that this hasn't been turned into some sort of production yet because we've got production gold happening That's all true. the time all it, the drama would make for a very try. it's not even <laughs> Producers, it would be so easy to do. Yeah, just just you don't even have to do the coaching for you know from the outside. Okay, here we're gonna have misunderstanding between this person and this mm -hmm. person. No, they don't even have to do that. You just sit back and watch. They don't yeah. need alcohol. That's what that's the thing with real world. They figured, okay, let's put complete polar opposites in a house and then give them unlimited alcohol. That was we this. are all in some ways complete polar opposites, and we are in the same house. It's right. it's our computer screen. It's YouTube and. There's so much craziness and fighting and accusations, be them correct and be them completely false, that right. it's hard to keep up some days. The most recent one about me that I heard was is that uh, Tim Osman, uh, the globe believer. Yeah, the guy we don't know the name of. Yeah. Right, that, that he is my brother. <laughs> uh, I don't, it's, uh, no offense, my queen, but mm -hmm. uh, son at the very least. Well, I'm not the one making up these <laughs> these accusations. Even though I know you're only 39. Well, my real brother's name is Tim, so that's how they... Oh, no, no. The the Tim Osmond, the guy that keeps sniping stuff, and I don't want to talk about him, but he's... Uh, we don't know his name. We've been trying. We know his face. We know just about everything about him other than his name. Well, so. he used to really, 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 really hassle me and you. Made a bunch of videos with us in it. And then has moved on to, I guess, greener pastures because we we're still here. <laughs> so he's um, he's trying to knock on other people's doors to rile them up. And you know what? He does his thing. I do my thing, and life goes on. Yeah, he'll make a mistake and slip up, and either go to prison or be dead. And I still or, believe, or just I, move on with his life. Maybe I, I don't think so. It. I'll look at it from that more positive. You can if you want. For me, the ghost of Lee Bracker, addled in chains, is going to come for him. Lee Bracker, that guy was a mess, and he did horrible things to you and me and others. Uh, but he and ended he up, died. He died. I mean, he died, which is sad, and no one really knows exactly how. I think he had a horrible illness. Um, what are you talking about? He killed himself. 
yeah, but he must have had some kind of mental illness to be able to do that. You don't just kill well, yourself. Mental illness was well, he messed with us. Well, I know I, you I don't want to add that he whatever it was that drove him to do the horrible things that he did to us and the lies he made up about us and others. Uh, whatever it was that caused all that, I feel sorry. He was a tortured soul. Yeah, you know I me. Mean? He went to the Karma Cafe, and there are no menus at the Karma Cafe. You get what you deserve. I think that's actually brilliant. Thank you. All right. I'm well, stolen from I, I want to look um, at this beautiful postcard here. We can see NASA Man on Moon. Is that like a lolcats thing? Mm, well, I'll tell you more about it. The very bottom is covered by this sticker. Thanks, post office. <laughs> so, uh, there we go. I know I saw it. All so, right. what? Uh, um, I can't read what's below it because they covered it. Um, anyway, this is made by a flat earther, uh, Amanda McLeod. And she's a member of TTCC, which is the Three Cat Club, if you've ever seen people saying that in chats. She sent me this postcard from Australia, where she lives. It says, hi, Patricia. This is one of my creations. I'm going to do a series of flat cat postcards, stickers for all the feline flatter people out on the plane. You're welcome to show this on your show. And uh, she has a store that you can order, and it's called uh, on, on Etsy. It's T A S H B E L L Tash Bell store, and that is from Amanda. Uh, Amanda That's McLeod. nice. Yeah, it's cool that she did this, and she is the person that, as far as I know, originated making one of those stamps, those self-inking stamps that have flat Earth sayings on them that people can use for money or. I mean, I know that's illegal, but if that's what you wish to do or stamp anything, stamp your bills or whatever, she came up with that on her Tash Bell uh, sales site herself a um, couple of months ago, actually. So <laughs> inventive flat earthers who love cats. So so uh, what is uh, coming up for you and I? I think we've got we've got something happening pretty soon, don't we? Uh, well, I hope so. We're, uh, <laughs> we're going to take a shot at it and hopefully it works. And that is I'm going to be visiting you uh, shortly. As a matter of fact, this Sunday, I'm going to be going down to Houston. You got your plane ticket. I got my plane ticket. and I'm picking you up at the airport. I'm hoping I can... Well, if I got home from the airport, I can drive to the airport. I'm sure it'll be fine. Right. I mean, seriously, it's 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 a whole, like an almost another week. I know, but there are serious areas of flooding in Houston right now. Yeah, it's mostly the stuff. Non-drivable. No. Yeah. I I looked. You're in the north part. NASA's in the north part. The, the point is, is that we're going to try to visit with the documentary team, NASA, and mm -hmm. the, all their exhibits, and we've got permission from them already. And we're just going to go down there and do our commentary, and hopefully not cause too much trouble and hopefully not get thrown out by enraged astronauts. <laughs> and also we're going to probably do a secret show here together in the same room, I guess. Yes. Right? Yeah. So next, is that Wednesday? I think, I think it is. Or we should for Wednesday because I'm leaving on the, yeah, because I'm leaving Thursday. So next Wednesday. Next Wednesday, I will, we'll be doing it in the we'll same room. And then cause a lot of controversy because people say, hey, we're always in the same room. <laughs> exactly. I think it's going to be great because I've gone to where you are twice now. And this will be the first time for you coming here. So Yeah. Yeah, it'll be fun. And hopefully uh, the uh, Daniel makes it there without incident. Mm -hmm. And he may be going up to visit Chris Pontius. Yes, the uh, Flat Earth Models maker. Yeah, and from if, flat, Earth, it, flat Earth Models com. And if you... Uh, don't know who the Daniel is that we are speaking of. If you go in the Wayback Machine on some of the earlier episodes of Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes, what what episode was that where he appeared? Do you remember? Chris, it was fairly recent. Well, no, not Chris. Daniel, the uh, filmmaker. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, um, Daniel was in. Uh, I, can't. Shoot, I, I don't remember. Mm -hmm. I think it was it was definitely in the one seventies though. Yes, yes. I'm looking at the same time because I just want to know. I have to know. Oh, there it is. 174. Yeah. 174 is Daniel. And right before that is Chris Pontius at 173. Right so. on. Yeah, that'll be fun. We'll, we'll have a good time with that. And hopefully it'll be uneventful. And who knows? Daniel may even want to head to some of the damaged zones. I want it to be eventful. Great. 
I think it'd Great. be really fun having you here. And, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. We can cook. You're gonna, you're gonna pick a fight with somebody at NASA and it'd be like and, and then he whoever it is is gonna be yelling at me because you don't hit girls. <laughs> <laughs> so here I'll be on the floor and, and Daniel will be shooting this and, and you'll be commentating and I will have laughing. Said, yeah, laughing. <laughs> <laughs> things like mark roll over on the other side of your arm not, because you're covering the blood <laughs> nah that won't nice. happen well nice. shall we look at our illuminati game cards i think i gave my pack to right. you last time right yeah are you ready yeah illuminati confirmed game cards and honestly it's been so long i've completely lost place to where we are <laughs> i don't even know either I'm so we're gonna them. wing this ready yes <laughs> thank you I've got them. There you go. Thanks. Cool. All right. So you go first. I don't know where we yeah, were. I don't know where. Honestly, I, I don't know where we left off. Me and just so you know, I am going to be. I'm going to let let this out early. Oh, you know, we we haven't even talked about this, but let's segue into this real quick. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be signing. I'm going to be autographing these with silver and gold pens and giving them away at the conference to people who ask questions during my thing. During my Q and A, do you think people really want it? No. <laughs> are you kidding? These are Illuminati confirmed cards. Uh, that's true. I always wanted these, but I never bought them because I always thought, oh, they're so expensive on eBay. Yeah. So, well, no, that that way, I'm, I'm going to sign the back side or this side. You know, the I'm going to sign this side and leave this side good. But anyway, oh, and sorry, the the conference. Let's talk about that real quick before we do this. Yes, yes. The uh, the reason why oh I mentioned. Oh my gosh, that, I can't believe this. I know what we're going to talk about, no, but no, I, I can't believe. We can, why did we not lead with this? I don't know. So the conference, they have found a way to squeeze a couple dozen more people into the room. So what we're saying is the bathrooms will now be uh, allowable for people to attend and stand exactly. in the bathroom. <laughs> but actually, they're doing it like basketball games where they're actually going to be chairs next to the panel. <laughs> it's just going to be like behind them. No, oh. I have no idea what they're going to do. Although that wouldn't surprise me if they did try to pull that off. The uh, uh, Robbie Everyone Davidson make is, sure to wear deodorant when you go because it's going to be some cramped quarters at the old. It might be. I see. There's, good, there's, there's at least 24. Four, I think, left general admission seats, and very exciting. There's five VIPs Ooh. that are available right now. So, if you were on the waiting list, you're probably off it already. And if you're looking for a ticket, contact. Go to fe2017.com. Again, five VIP seats and twenty something general admission seats have been opened up. I do not think they're going to try to. They'll be opening up anymore between now and and the thing. As far as press passes go, quick reminder, if anyone wants press passes, do not ask for four press passes. Most you can hope for is two, and then we'll see what happens after that. So anyway, sorry. Illuminati cards. I'm lost. I think I filed mine away incorrectly mine, last time. Mine are alphabetical. Because you put them alphabetically? To... The what? Oh, mine are alphabetical too. Yeah. I don't know where I left off. Why are we so disorganized? No. Oh, Why are we so boring? <laughs> you know what? Let's change this. Let's not. Let's just pick the ones we like, and then. All right. Well, mine are still in alphabetical let's, order. This so. will be the last one. This will be the last time we do it because you got the your good ones in there. It's the All last right. time we do these. I'm ready. Okay. So, and like you guys have to let me know if I've already done these. I'll pick my. Yeah, pick. I can't remember since it's been three weeks or more since we did this, I might be reading a repeat. Because your cards are cooler than mine. Because uh, I'm martial, cooler than you. Martial yeah. law. Did I already do the martial law one? I think so, because we talked about you being dressed yeah, up as martial right, law. Like did I do moon base? Don't think so, no. That's a Richard Hoagland type card. That's the opposite of the NASA card, which is the NASA is the, uh, the one where it's cardboard cutouts. So that's moon. this is the moon base card. And here's the Edward Snowden card. Otherwise, Funny, by the way, Swamp Lover asks in the live chat if we've been drinking. <laughs> no, we haven't. We're just like this all the time. Uh, this is the And Stay Dead. That's the name of the card. Is that zombie-ish? Well, yeah, but it's it's actually, there's a, you can look up this one. It's called And Stay Dead. And they've got a picture of Snowden, and it's pretty similar to this one. Interesting. Yeah, there's also one, also known as the Alex Jones card. I'll pull that one up real quick. Oh, I've seen that one before. 
Yeah, we I got all have. Because mine aren't mine aren't that good. You got you got some of the the better quality cards in yours. The Vampires, Wall Street, Whispering Campaign. Uh, shoot, where is it? One sec. Where's the Alex Jones card? It's called Agent in Place. Where the heck did I did I not have it? Maybe I've got it. Shoot, you may have the Alex Jones. Card. Okay, well anyway, this is the one I'm going to end with, right? Mm-hmm. Then I'm just going to start autographing these eventually. How much do we do? Four? How many are we doing? Four or five? Well, four or five. But just pick in, in yours. Pick out the really good ones. Oh, so, I, I just have the next ones coming up. They're pretty good. All right. Okay. Uh, yeah, because I gave you the better one. This one's called Video Games. Perfect. That'll be the last card I do. All right. Here's my cards. We start right. with these are these are just the next four in the in the list. Right. This one is called Wow. Check it out, everyone. Early warning. Really? Yep. Perfect they, for hurricanes. Synchronicity. And I don't know if I held this one up last time, and if so, sorry for the repeat, but it does suit today's news. So that's my first one. My next one is. I don't know what this is, but I'll hold it Tell up me. since I picked Read it. Empty V V E E. Oh, MTV. Ah, see, empty. they didn't want to break copyrights. I see. They didn't want to break copyrights. All right. Well, I don't see that as being a forecast of anything, other than I used to want to be a VJ back in the day. That was a dream of mine. Nice. The next one is fast food chains. Hmm. And those look like flies flying over and around the it could be. food, which would make complete sense because even flies won't eat it, and we shouldn't either. And last but not least, dun dun dun! Really? Are you serious? That was the that was the last yeah. card in your. Because that was in the E's and the F's. Flat Earthers. I'd hold on to that one. That's the actual flat Earth card. And we all are pretty familiar with what it says. People laugh, but the flat earthers know something. Right. Absolutely. More than something, I'd say. And again, the fact that there's a flat earth card at all in this deck that was made 20 years ago is impressive. So, yeah, you better hold on to your deck because you got all the good stuff. I'm going to bring the whole deck with me to the uh, conference and then you can use them to hand out. All right. Well, don't don't bring the flat earth card. Okay. <laughs> No, I mean, the rest of them is fine. I mean, because you have like the World Trade Center card as well. Really? I didn't yeah. even get there yet. Well, that's because it's W and I'm into the S. Yeah. Uh, a couple of things I've received in the mail. Uh, I did a, a blood draw to check and see if I was RH negative or what my blood type is on a previous show, the one that's got red vampire lips and vampire fangs on it. I know it's, it's a joke. So some people took that to mean that I'm demonic, but no, it was just a joke. Um, I ordered another one of these Elden Home Kits, and... He's a vampire. <laughs> haven't done it yet. And I ordered something that I have been told by many people who I love and respect, don't do it! But that is the 23andMe DNA Saliva Collection Kit, which will tell you about your health and your ancestry. And it looks a little like this. Hmm. Huh. You send your saliva off and they'll tell you that you're part this and part that and three quarters this and et cetera, et cetera. And it takes a long time to get the results back. So your first step is you register at this 23andMe.com and then you spit into a tube and then you mail it back. And then they analyze the sample and they send you an email to let you know your reports and then they're online and then you can access them and see what your DNA means about you. Now, a lot of flat earthers don't believe that DNA is real. And you know what? Hey, I'm, it's quite possible all of this is a scam. Also, a lot of flat earthers believe that doing this will put my private information in some kind of collection facility where they'll do nefarious things with it. But the way I look at it, if, they, the powers that should not be, want information about me. They've already got it. They've already got information about all of us. If you've ever been to a doctor, your health records, you've had your blood drawn for something, you know, they've got you. They yeah, know they've already got you. They know where you live. Now, yeah. 
I'm hoping this isn't something nefarious because I do want to know my heritage. I only know my parents did a whole family tree thing a long time ago in the 80s when it started becoming very popular. I know parts about my heritage, but I don't know the full story. So when I get that, I'll let you know. Not that you care about my history, but a lot of people haven't done this test and they're curious about it and what it's like and what you get back. And it'll be probably a couple of months. I'll, I'll do it maybe tomorrow and mail it off. And uh, after that, I'll let you know what it says. And exactly. Mark always says, I'm an alien or I'm a this or I'm a that. We'll find out for sure. You no, know, I think everyone should do this test, Patricia. <laughs> and there is nothing to be worried about. Um, you've been exposed is here in our chat and he says something like, uh, this is no joke and I'm not playing with this. I'm not sure what he's speaking of. So dread, what are you talking about? It's definitely, uh, somebody fill me in on what's going on in the chat. Oh, by the word, the, the term I actually used for you was replicant. Repl more, spe more specifically reverse vampire alien CIA replicant. What about satanic tranny clone? What about what about man? What about psychopaths? Have those all just gone out of style? No, but there's only so I'm I'm not a big guy on titles. So right, right. I don't know. How many labels can I throw on there? They get the gist. There's no way any one person could be all of those things. They kind of cancel each other out. But you know, I do know something about you an exposed dread, uh, waiting for him to come back and say what he was talking about. He lives in Florida. Who else lives in Florida? Uh, I think um, Lori Frary lives in Florida. Um, also, um, Stars Our Souls. Michael Williams hey, lives in Florida. He's, you, you've been exposed. He could do a special uh, Irma. These people you know. need, you need, you guys hopefully will all get out. I have personal friends who live in Florida. There's a very short period of time in early high school, junior high and early high school that I lived in Florida, in the Hollywood, Florida area, which is kind of near Fort Lauderdale and all of that. Um, yeah. The politicians, by the way, are already over preparing for this thing because they saw the backlash that the mayor of Houston got. Let's see what people are saying. Um, dun, dun, dun. Yes, Dread does live, does live in the hurricane area. Ginger Sugarbush. Uh, yes, Fallout, in my opinion, is one of the greatest games of all time. Fallout 3, if Warcraft was my married life, Fallout was my mistress. <laughs> it's an interesting way to look at it. That's well, true. Um, let's see. Beautiful place. I don't think I'd want to live there, though. I want to say hi to Twitwit, by the way. A um, couple people here are in Florida. Everyone in Florida is probably planning on getting to safer areas, right? Please. Yeah, normally you'd say go to high ground. However, Florida is not a lot of high ground there. It's below sea Basically level? flat. It's one of the 99% flat states. Mm. Mostly because it's got that huge section. It's water. You know, it's swampy. Uh, the Hori Sheet Show has a video game question for you. Since you held up a video game card, he asks, uh, has Mark ever played Ultima Online? No, no. I'm, I'm really a Blizzard snob, to be honest. I played most of what Blizzard made, although I didn't play the latest Diablo because I just didn't have time. Mm. So, sorry. Well, I don't play Dread of you've been exposed says we're getting out. Thank goodness. And I know there's other flat earthers that live in Florida that I haven't mentioned. Um, it's just yeah, such I'd, a shame. I'd, I'd, well, he's got a family, so it'd be different. But if he could get someone. No, in, you'd have to get out of there. I think that if it's Cat 5 when it hits, they're saying Cat 6. Now, as far as I know, there's no. Oh, problem. right. He won't be able to broadcast. <laughs> and the eye wall is pretty big, too. Even if he had a generator, it'd be right. tough. I'm thinking of buying a generator. Um, Don't. Why? I was looking into home generators, the kind nope. that are not portable nope. and that run off your natural gas. Did you gas. not read my manual? Yes. Now, here's the thing about generators. If you have a generator, y y you'll annoy your neighbors. Your neighbors will come to your house for help, which, of course, is t totally fine, but also bad people with nefarious intent. Remember that part house. where you were saying that there's the noise. red flashing arrows pointing at you? That would be. Trust okay. me, I own two generators. I right. own past tense. And the reason I got rid of them was I went down those, you know, did a lot of thought into it. I was like, yeah, that's exactly what happened. Because you remember the, the Twilight Zone episode I threw at you where people were pointing at the house, like everybody, everybody's 
house on the street monsters was on main street. monsters the yeah the monsters are due on maple street maple street i was like a version of that if your lights are on and nobody else's lights are on you are going to have people show up at your door if you don't if, if you're fully prepared for that hey great but i can almost guarantee you that some of the people there they're showing up your door are plus there there's also at best case scenario there's people that will try to steal the generator right yeah so it's just wait till you, you turn off the lights and right. all of a sudden be like click but I'd want to be able to help people, but that's the thing. You'll help people to the point where everything you have will be gone. So, yeah, you're yeah, right. The good Samaritan in the apocalypse? Dead. Yeah. Right. First, actually. Right. Very true. Uh, Dread, it's nice, it's nice that you would, you would do that. Yeah, of course. Uh, Dread, if you've been exposed, says he's going to keep everybody posted. Uh, Earth Pond uh, is in here talking about. Uh, oops, I just missed his. Um, he played that game when he was in middle school. It was the best. Let me see what game that was. Wombra is talking about what, Ultima, Ultima Online. Online. Yeah, he says uh, Wombra says it's his ultimate game too. I don't play games. I've mentioned it before that the only one I like is Pole Position, which is where there's a little car. Yeah, that is. <laughs> <laughs> so okay one that's an arcade game i, I like loved it stand up Back coin up game from the 80s yeah it was very well done for its era but you know you're talking to a guy that literally took two years of his life and just drank wine and played video games for two straight years what kind of wine do you like uh it doesn't have to be expensive i don't have a palate for it like neil deGrasse tyson does <laughs> i don't he he prides us oh yeah he drinks a lot of expensive wines like who cares like over 10 bucks you can drink some decent wine and well do you like uh, reds whites oh i'm i'm easy uh red I, I like reds i like whites i'm i'm actually fond of rieslings okay i think i have reasons. come from a pretty strong german family so indeed you do no wait a minute i thought we have a croatian oh, girl as our daughter so that would what? mean you're what? Croatian. What? <laughs> <laughs> or conspiracies. Half, half family immigrate to Russia. Other half. United We're proud States. of our daughter. Oh, she's Croatian so girl. Going to be a wonderful spy one day. <laughs> Funny thing is that there's 50% of the audience saying, what the heck are they talking about? Oh, yeah. Croatian girl. Or Patricia got crap because one of the flat earthers. This is before flat earth teens and all the other all the other people came out. She was 16 when she did the interview and people were saying, oh, it's child abuse. It's like, what? Well, First her, of all, her father introduced her to conspiracy and she was already into chemtrails before she found flat earth. And her father found you, Mark, and listened to your videos and yeah. introduced her to flat earth through you. And I interviewed her. And uh, anyway, um, somebody found the video and we had really bad internet connection for our interview myself and croatian girl and uh i was re rephrasing a sentence that had dropped out previously where i said okay so where were we somewhere like your father and mark Sargent, and and then she picked up and went on with what she and was talking somebody about asked, somebody jumped on that somebody thought i was saying your father is mark Sargent." yeah it's like okay all right. Most, uh, and I, I don't blame him for doing that because I was pretty consistent. I say that Russia has never been our enemy and that it's just a big hype game where... Well, that video is gone from my channel. There's only two videos gone from my channel. That video is not on my channel anymore because Croatian girl, although still a flat earther, she was receiving too much hassle and uh, doesn't have a channel anymore. So she asked me to pull that video because I, she just was not able to take it and because of her age i thought fair enough also the other video that is removed from my my canon of video interviews and shows is anar kusk uh he has basically uh pulled away from flat earth he was doing the documentary on flat earth called finding the curve and he gave a vague reason to most everybody that he was working on something and just couldn't have his name out there associated with flat earth anymore so that video has been put on private on my channel yeah. so again i still would be proud well people think that uh the conspiracy with the video for croatian girl being off my channel shows we were busted mark no no actually it's because uh, you know they don't you don't want to you know if she's going to go further down the path 
you know, she doesn't want a lot of images where they can tire. Yeah, she'll look a little different. The spy path, like we exactly. did. Yeah, when you're doing the whole spy craft thing, you can't. She was serious about it, so. <laughs> Uh, Irk Child says, Mark won't do the DNA test because it would prove that I'm his son. <laughs> Irk Child is your son. Really? How old is Irk Child? I have no idea, but that's a new, let's get that conspiracy going. Yeah, let's get that going. Yeah, you know, who let, Yeah, who exactly uh, is our, our Mike This would be good. Since so many conspiracies are cooked up about all of us, and I think I do get up, maybe I'll just say a lot more than most people. Yes. For some reason. Deservedly so. Why? Deservedly so. <laughs> are you kidding? <laughs> I want to do conspiracies on you, but I can't. Because <laughs> um, it's fun, I guess? Yeah. All right. Well, I would like to cook up one and just put it out there and see if they see if the uh, paranoid bite on it. But I can't think of anything really, really juicy to say about me. Mm. So, oh, well, here, something that hasn't already been done? Yeah, I mean, everything's been done. We could think of something to do while you're here, a conspiracy. I can't think of what it would be. <laughs> I can't. Uh, I, I, I won't do anything like that. But, you know, sometimes the people who are flat earthers in name only, who like to troll other flat earthers. Before, uh, before you came up to Seattle, who's that girl you were dating? There you um, go. See? What? <laughs> that right there. What? That I'm lesbian. That would be, but that people have tried that already. You, you aren't lesbian? Of course not. Um, so, okay. yeah, that one won't work. That's been sure. tried. They've all been tried. Right. Good. You know, Good. another one that's been tried is I'm not really vegan and behind the scenes I'm eating T-bone steaks. Okay. If you, if you insist. What are you talking about? You were literally <laughs> double fisting like handfuls of bacon bits when you were here. <laughs> you know, bacon bits are vegan. Funny enough. Bacon no, these bits. Were, these were. The these brand were. name in the jar. They're vegan. They're made out of soy protein. Who knew? Funny enough. Uh, Truman no, Parr says. They have it salad bars. Oh, yeah, I think those are real. No, not those. You're talking no, about the right. real no, pieces. You're right, some celebrate. I'm talking about hey. like the hotel. Anyway. Somewhere nice. Right. Truman Carr says, I'm Patricia's son that her parents raised. Oh, here's something good. We could start a rumor that a particular flat earther is my son. Yeah. Who's it going to be? I don't know. Get some nominations and we'll get somebody. Mm, okay. Oh, hey, by the way, while I'm there, we should probably, you know, we should do that as part of the show thing. Maybe I'll send it to you again. We still got to get the um, the award show. Oh yes, thing. I've got the list in front of me, but we the should flatties. definitely do that. We're doing the flatties from the Flat Earth Conference, and we're we haven't prepared yet. So uh, well, I mean, yeah. we, we need the trophies got to be made up. So right, are we going to do an actual trophy or like uh, Mr. Moot? He made one for me last year that got crushed in my move back. No, from the they're UK. they're handing out trophies at this thing. Although I don't think their names are going to be on them. It's just going to be a flat. Huh, it's gonna be a generic trophy, and then, but we still got to pick the names. But he he wanted to go over designs. We got time, but mm -hmm. anyway. Uh, let's see. Ginger Sugarbush says he's ginger. Oh, that's true. That's it, you guys. Let's all tell people on the sly, on the down low, that the YouTuber Ginger Sugarbush is my mm -hmm. son. That would don't tell anyone. That would assume that the carpet matches the drapes. Uh, I'm not sure mm -hmm. about that. Does, does. <laughs> by that i mean public hair oh of course um well i don't know about ginger <laughs> i only know about me let's not talk about that though uh not oh. a hint of hint of flush in your face that is professionalism right there i want to say my best stuff did nothing <laughs> it's yeah. funny people are talking about conspiracies if dina says what patricia is not a lesbian and Arwen says, raw blood, Patricia. Everyone knows that you like raw blood. <laughs> like, okay. Oh, hey, my all those children. I'm not judging. Funny. Uh, maybe, oh, Awakened Mind says, Dan Pratt. Let's, let's start the conspiracy. Dan Pratt's my brother. He is 10 years younger than me, give or take. And Star Gods is my father. Yeah. Yeah, but we don't know how old Star Gods is. He could literally be like 53. That's true. And just, Some, you know, city miles. Sometimes living wrong does that to a person. <laughs> so I call it city miles. <sighs> well, I guess Mark we've my kind of... Cousin, nice. All right, glasses are coming off. There we go. Now I'm cool again. Yeah, right. 
You know what is cool? I think people who are questioning the reality we've been given, we're all cool. Doesn't matter if we're geeks. Wow. I, that is one of the nerdiest things I've heard. No, but I think so. I think so. Cool. No, it's cool. Them. People that don't don't have to drink, or people that want to express their feelings. That's yes, what's cool. That uh, is seriously what is what's that cool. that little speech right there could have been at a pep assembly at a high school, and kids are just been sitting there going, "Oh." In the eighties, oh. it could have yeah, been in the eighties. Yes, a John Hughes movie. Yeah, that movie. would have been a John Hughes pep <laughs> pep assembly speech. <laughs> Funny. You know what's cool is kids that don't give in to peer pressure. That's right. You have like have two people clap. Golf clap. Yeah, two people. Well, I think we've, as always, beat this one right into the ground. Augured this one in. Yeah, it's done and dusted. So uh, tonight, because it's Tuesday, let me do a shameless plug. Tonight I've got Strange World on True Frequency Radio. But we've used all the good material up on my show. That show's going to be boring. Did I say that? Okay, first. <laughs> Are you firing at me? Yes, I am firing at you. Ow. And what you don't know is your replicant eyes respond badly to that. So you're going to like forget something and then wake up in the middle of the night and go to the fridge and eat something that you shouldn't be. Like? I don't know. Because I was going to say, so I thought that maybe you'd have some non-vegan stuff in there. No, there's not a single non-vegan thing in my entire house. Period. Wow. All right. Uh, no, so core. yeah, so I'm doing Strange World tonight. I'm not doing any guests. I'm just taking calls. So if you guys want to call in and talk about stuff, that's what I'm going to do. Doing the meetup with D Marble. I don't know if Paul and the Plane's going to that, but that's going to be on Thursday. I want to go to every meetup that D Marble's at. Well, I do too. Is it, is it just me? <laughs> I, I mean, wait a minute. Can D Marble be my son? No, wait. Uh, so you dated Denzel Washington for a while? <laughs> okay, now that's a good one. We'll start that one too. <laughs> <laughs> He's the only guy I could think of, right? Or, um, or no, wait, um, uh, Prince. Lou Gossip Jr. <laughs> I just said Prince. I don't know why. <laughs> Prince? No. Uh, well, or, he's um, no longer here, so he's not going to deny it. Good point. And then, yeah, anyway, Sunday, I'll be heading out your way. And, and you know, Chris Topher has a question, and it's a good one, but we addressed it earlier, which is, anyone know what happened to the NASA Space Center in Houston? Well, guess what? Nothing! It's totally Well, they, evac they evacuated, but well, uh, obviously. whatever. Nothing. But the, the, everyone came back. In fact, there was a little article saying, oh, well, the astronauts, everybody there had to relocate, and then they had to come back. But they're all back. And, you know, some supposed astronauts on the supposed ISS an article came out, I shared it on my Twitter and Facebook, that they had to come down from the ISS because they live in Houston and they had to be with their families after the storm. Oh, get me a barf bag. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't think I've used the word barf in some time. <laughs> That's okay. I like it. I it's know you do. Very 80s. Oh, God. Uh, Carolyn Goodman Day says, D Marvel's going to love that you said that, Patricia. I think he's amazing. He's really, you know, Paige, D-I-T-R-H's girlfriend, and I are going to have a, a cage match to the death over D Marble's love. <laughs> really? Start, start that rumor, everyone. <laughs> of course, I'm just joking, but it's fun stuff to talk about. My deep, my um, deep yeah. So anyway, hey, hello to Lisa. Je prefer flat, who's flat earth freedom now. A lot of people joining late. Um, I don't know if, oh, there's a Rebel Rebel uh, in the chat as well. And, oh, Five Arts Liberalis says we can start the rumor that Andy Kaufman is my dad or was my dad. There you go. No, he wouldn't be old enough, I don't think. Really? Oh, yeah, you're right. That's true. Because he, he died in the... It would have to be somebody who's in their 80s now. Right. So we'll have who to pick is the, Who's the guy for... Uh, what about Sean Connery? Now? Is he look in his 80s? Look who's coming to dinner. Yeah, Sean Connery would be in his 80s. Okay, so my dad is Sean Connery. Don't tell anyone. Tell Your dad is Sean Connery. Okay. And my mom was Audrey Hepburn. Oh, that's the fantasy you want to go with. That's fine. Yeah, tell people that. In reality, okay. your dad was probably a supercomputer and your mom was... Uh, advanced biological testing lab you're not supposed to tell people that 
And on that note, that concludes episode number 184 of Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. I'm your sweet potato, Patricia. Look out! Williams. She's the Terminator! <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to all the potatoes here who have joined us. It's been a fun show. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as we have. I'm going to get back to interviewing people pretty soon. I've got lots of stuff to do. I'm still working on helping hurricane victims, uh, the volunteering that I'm doing at the convention center, so I don't really have time for that during the day. But I soon will be back to doing interviews. If there's something I'm that you... go back to... Well, Charities, literacy programs, world domination. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's what you need to get on right away, <laughs> especially the world domination. It's <laughs> um, good. It's a good crazy man laugh. Maniacal. Uh, if you want to be interviewed or if you know somebody who would make a good interview candidate, send me your name or their name and I'll, you know, think about it because it's, it, it would be fun. If you want to do that, let me know. It's not that I've run out of ideas or people. I just figured I've never asked you who are watching who you think I should talk to. Please let me know. And uh, don't say Eric Dubay. <laughs> My email address is Miss Steer, M-I-S-S-S-T-E-E-R-E -E -E, at gmail.com. That's weird because that spells out phonetically mystery. Yep. There you go. All right, Mark. Talk to you next time. And see Mark Sargent tonight, or watch him anyway, or whatever. Listen to him on Strange World on TFR. Right. At, Listen to uh, me. Yeah. Ten uh, Eastern Pacific, or East Ten Eastern Time. Yes. Ten Pacific. Just put the headphones on and listen to me come through into your head. What? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Talk to everyone later. Keep it flat.